whole my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is our third Sunday service, and every third Sunday in July is our church anniversary. Uh, and so, once again, I want to say to you, happy anniversary. The church is now 116 years old. Look at what the Lord has done for us. We have always been in the hand of the Lord, and even in the midst of this pandemic, we are still in the hands of the Lord. I will assure you that this church shall indeed we march on way beyond the pandemic and on into eternity. So you have no worries whatsoever. God has this thing in his hand. He has got this thing fixed. Amen. On today, I want to teach for a little while. And if you would, I want to go to, I guess you would say, not a usual church anniversary text, but it is a text where the Lord has led me. If you would, get your Bibles, your pen, and your paper, and we are going to be sharing this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58. Let's have a word of prayer and we will press on this morning. Father God, thank you for this day, my God. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. Thank you, Father, for waking us up to see a brand new day. Father God, we've entered into your house, my God, with the purpose of worshiping and honoring and adoring you, my God. Father, it is not about us, my God. Father, take us out of the way and allow your Holy Spirit to fill us right now. Father God, it's my heart desire to minister your word to your people, my God. Father God, it is not about me, but Father, it is all about you. Lord God, I want to lift you up and put you on display so the whole world will see and know who you are, and they will come to have a personal relationship with you. Father God, as we endeavor to minister your word, I ask that the Holy Spirit will fill me even right now. Holy Spirit, bring back to my active mind, my active memory, even right now everything that you desire to say to minister unto the people of God. But Father, it's not me ministering, but it's your Holy Spirit that is ministering to your people, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God, for the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, your word does not come with just words only, but it comes in power. It comes in demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the power of your word, and I thank you for the demonstration of your word in the lives of your people. I thank you, Father, that as your people hear this word, their lives shall be eternally changed and eternally blessed. I thank you, Lord God, that as your people hear this word, they will be equipped and empowered to continue on and to run on for another 116 years. And Father, would ever be so careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Once again, if you have your, your pen and your paper and your Bibles, if you would turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and look at verse number 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For just a little while, I want to teach on what we owe MPR Church. What we owe MPR Church. Let me take this opportunity to thank all of you who have been serving faithfully in MPR Church over the past year. It is because of your faithful service to the Lord Jesus Christ that MPR Church uh, is a successful light that cannot be hid in the town of Colfax. 
It is by the grace of God that we have come this far by faith. And we pray that God shall continue to supply the grace that we can achieve even more for the Lord in the future. Happy anniversary to NPR, and may God continually supply our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, just very so briefly, let's turn our attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In this rich correspondence, Paul approaches his members of the church as a spiritual father who is worried and who he is concerned about the condition of the church that he is at Corinth. He writes from his own experience and knowledge about the resurrection in order to bring them to a soberness, a point of to restore their way of thinking about God. The Corinthian church was confused about the resurrection of the believers. Therefore, in the letter which the church had written to Paul, one of the questions they had to ask Paul was concerning the resurrection of the believers. Because some in the church were flatly denying the resurrection, and others were apparently following some false teachings on the matter. The answer of Paul is very simple, and he lays out the resurrection of Jesus Christ and proves the resurrection of the human body. In fact, Jesus Christ arose so that all men in their full and complete persons the bodies as well as their spirit would live forever with God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the resurrection of man absolutely a certainty. After establishing the truth of the resurrection in the first 11 verses of First Corinthians, Paul goes from verse 12 all the way down to verse 56, and addressing some general concerns about the resurrection. Ah, Lord have mercy. Now, Paul, now I know you Bible scholars are already saying that this text has nothing to do with a church anniversary, Pastor. But I beg the difference with you on this point this morning. Why is it that I beg to differ with you on this morning? Well, when you look at verse 57 and 58, Paul is now exalting the church in the faith. And it is from that point that I want to teach and preach on this morning. And I just want to do a little, and I don't want to dig too deep because we can go get too deep and get too lost. But I just want to dig a little into this text. And I really want to zoom in on verse number 58. I understand verse number 57 and talk about the victory that we have in Christ. But I only want to use verse 58 and use it as a platform to encourage us on this Christian journey. I don't know about you, but I do believe that all of us need some encouragement as we are on this Christian journey. So if you don't mind, let's just walk through verse number 58 together. Then we will soon close out, go to the house, and you can eat your anniversary dinner on this evening. Amen? Therefore, my beloved brethren, as the verse starts, now this is the conclusion of the whole matter of the resurrection. Ah, Paul is now wrapping up 
his doctoral, his doctoral teaching on the resurrection. But notice how he wraps it up. He does it in a very tender, in a very affectionate manner with the people of the church at Corinth. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, Paul was owning the spiritual relationship to the Corinthian church. Paul was expressing great love, the great love that he had for those at the church. That love that filled him with a concern for him that they might both be sound in principle and right in practice and continue to be so as well. It is remarkable how frequently Paul uses the term brethren. When you look at the epistle of Corinthians, Paul uses brethren on 12 different occasions in 1 Corinthians. When you look at the 12 epistles of Paul, Paul uses brethren some 42 different times. But in the case of the Corinthian church, not even their gross sins and mistake of sensual and carnal nature could diminish his love for them, nor his loving persuasion helping them to confirm more perfectly to the will of God. Let me put my foot on the brake here. Paul loved them in spite of them. Lord, have mercy. You've got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, you have got to learn how to love other believers in spite of other believers. In spite of their missteps, in spite of their mistakes, in spite of their failures, in spite of their trials, in spite of how immature they are, you have got to love them just the way that they are for now and pray that they will grow and become stronger as the day go by. Look, let me help you here. Don't forget that you too was once a babe in Christ. You too had some missteps, some missteps along the way on your Christian journey. You, you, everybody weren't born a super Christian. We are all on this journey together, and we are helpers of one another. Hmm. All right, now let me get off my foot off the break and let me move on. Therefore, my beloved brethren, I, I, one that I found that was so intriguing to me and it just kind of pops out, Paul uses in the church of Philipp Philippians uh, 4 and 1. He says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. <laughs> the thing that this really pictures out is dealing with Paul encouraging the saints to stand fast in the Lord. It really is a picture of a soldier standing fast against the onslaught of the enemy. He refuses to get ground no matter the pressure or strength of the attack. Oh, he does not flinch. He is not unstable. He is never defeated. The Christian believer is to stand fast no matter how great the trial, no matter the pressure of the temptation, no matter the influence the offer or uh, the allurance made by the offer, you and I as children of God must learn to stand fast. And Paul is trying to encourage the Corinthian believers that they need to stand fast. And I want to do the same for you and I to encourage you, I, us, we to stand fast in the Lord. Hmm. Well, why is this phrase so important to the church, to us on this church anniversary Sunday? Well, this phrase is not applied to everybody, but it is applied to you and I, the believer. When Paul says, dearly beloved brethren, he ain't talking about the unsaved. This text was not addressing the unsaved. This text was addressing those that are inside of the household of faith. Let me help you here. 
this one is for you. You can't go and say, well, preacher, you just want preaching to me today. The devil is a liar. Yeah, I'm preaching to you today. This text is for you. The phrase is, is speaking of The devil is a liar. Always have a backup plan in place. Thank you, Lord. Why? Wow. Look here. You got to understand that this phrase he is speaking of having unshakable love for the brethren. This phrase is is used to encourage the brethren that are in Christ Jesus. So if you don't mind, I want to use it to encourage you in the faith on this morning. First of all, when I when I when, when when whenever I greet you as a brother, I'm telling you that I love you and you can't do anything to change that about me toward you. Let me say that again so that you can remember what I'm telling you on this morning. First of all, when I greet you as a brother, I'm telling you that I love you and you can't do anything to change that about me toward you. The reason I can and love you like that is because he first loved me when I was unlovable and kept on loving me in spite of how unlovable I was. God did not just say that he loved me. He proved that he loved me over 2,000 years ago at a place called Calvary. But thanks be to God, I accepted his love for me and now his love is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. It is with that same unconditional love that I'm able to love you like he loves me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to encourage you to love the brethren like he loves you. If he can look beyond my fault and still love me, you ought to be able to look beyond your brother and your sister's fault and still love them. If he can act positively on my behalf in spite of how negatively I have behaved, you ought to be able to act positively on behalf of your brother and your sister in spite of how they have I'll behave. Can I get a witness up in here? Oh. Hmm. Verse 58 goes on and it says, Be ye steadfast, unmovable. Ah, as a result of our history here at NPR Church, you and I ought to be steadfast and unmovable. Why is it that we need to be steadfast and unmovable? Because we still have a glorious future in front of us. And let me put my foot on the brake for a moment to help you to understand this pandemic is not the end of this church. We are going to keep on marching on. Let me help you here. There is nothing that could stop the forward momentum of this church, of the church of the living God. There's nothing that can stop the forward momentum of the movement of the kingdom of God. There is nothing that can stop the advancement of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is nothing that can stop the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness up in here, up in here? Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. You have got to understand we not only have a glorious future, but we have had a glorious past for the past 160 years. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He'll never fail us now. We won't turn around at all. Can I get a witness of it here? We've come this far by faith, and we are going to keep marching on by faith. We are marching up to Zion. We are marching up to King's Highway. We are marching.
marching on up to glory. Can I get a witness up in here? You've got to understand this glorious truth of 116 years to stir all of us to be steadfast, to be unmovable and serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, preacher, what should it stir us to do? Well, that's easy. Let's take a closer look at steadfast and unmovable for a second. First of all, the word steadfast means to be firm, fixed, determined, purpose, faithful. It means to be firm, fixed, determined, purpose, faithful. You and I are to stand fast and fixed in your belief and labor for the Lord. You and I are to stand fast and fixed in your determination to live for the Lord. You are to stand fast and fix and cry out, you're carrying out your purpose for the Lord. You are to stand fast and fix and being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ until the end. The word unmovable means to be unyielding, unshaken, and undisturbed. You are to stand unyielding, unshakable, and undisturbed in your belief and labor for the Lord. You are to stand unyielding, unshakable, undisturbed in your living for the Lord. You are to stand unyielding, unshakable, and undisturbed in your purpose for the Lord. You are to stand unyielding, unshakable, undisturbed, and being faithful to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until the end comes can I get an amen up in this house you've got to understand being faithful until the end is our requirement as children of God. We are not serving a sometime God. We're serving an all-time God. I want you to know that God is faithful to us even when we are unfaithful. But you and I have the requirements as a child of God to be faithful. You and I as members of NPR church are required to be faithful. Look at somebody and say you need to be faithful. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, fine, let me tell you this. Uh, a preacher was preaching one day, and uh, he tells the story, and I'll share his story that he told to help us to understand faithfulness. And then I got to take my foot off the brake and got to move on because I feel something right about now. He tells a story that in 1555, as part of her campaign to reestablish the Catholic Church in England, Queen Mary, also known as Bloody Mary, arranged for John Pilpot, one of the leading Protestant ministers of the day, to be burned at the stake. When his death sentence was pronounced, Pilpot said, I'm ready. God grant me strength and a joyful resurrection. Pilpot walked to the place of execution on his own, rather than having to be dragged to it. And when he reached it, he nearly kissed the stake at which he would be burned on. It is easy for us to focus on our problems and to think that they are larger than they really are. Most of us have never endured genuine persecution for our faith. A few times people have gotten upset with me for sharing the gospel with them, but none of them have tried to kill me. There are many, there may, be, there may come a day when we must take a same life death decision to belong to Christ regardless of the consequences. However, even in lesser trials, we have a definite choice to make. Will we stand firm for what is right or will we long lower the standard to avoid trouble? All of us have to make a decision in our minds whether we're going to be faithful or whether we're not going to be faithful. But I want to encourage you to hold on and hold out until the end. I want you to know that God will give you the strength to hold on. Paul says that his grace is sufficient for you. I want you to understand that God's grace will get you through to the end. And if you hold on to the end of this, this pandemic will pass. But until then, we have the grace of God to get us through day by day by day by day. Now, let me take my foot off this break because I could be there for a little while. 
because of those who have gone on before us. We should stand fast, means to be firm, fixed, determined, purpose, and faithful. We shall remain unmovable, which means to be unyielding, unshakable, and undisturbed in this time. Because I promise you, God has not lost control in this world. I promise you, God is still in control. Well, verse 58 goes on and says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We should always abound in the work of the Lord. The word always means never cease, never stop, never shaken up, never quit, never ever retire. Because of our rich history here at NPR, this is what we should do, and this is what we hold in NPR Baptist Church. You and I should never ever stop laboring in the Lord. You and I should never ever stop working. Our work is not done. It ain't over yet. Look at somebody and say, it ain't over yet. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always engaged in doing the will of God. Always engaged in promoting his Lord. Always engaged in advancing his kingdom. Always engaged in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The phrase means not only to be engaged in this, but to be engaged diligently, laboriously, and to the point of excelling in this. The work of the Lord here means that which the Lord requires of you and I. The work of the Lord here means all the appropriate duties of Christianity. Paul exalted them to practice every Christian virtue. Paul exalted them all that they could do to follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me put it to you this way. You remember in Luke chapter 2 when Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. And his parents three days later found out that Jesus was missing. And when they found Jesus and began to scold Jesus, Jesus asked them a question, how is it that you sought me? Know ye not that I must be about my father's business? He had been about his father's business doing what his father wanted him to do. And let me help you up in here while you have breath in your body. You need to be about your father's business. Even in the midst of this pandemic, you need to be about your father's business. Even in the midst of this testing time, you need to be about your father's business. Jesus said in John chapter 9 and verse number 4, I must work the works of him who have sent me while this day, for the night cometh when no man can work. You've got to understand the work of the gospel does not cease, it keeps on carrying on. And you and I owe it to NPR to keep on sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We share it with everyone that we come in contact with. I know you say, well, preacher, i got to stay at home in order to stay safe. Well, let me help you here. If you've got a phone in your house, you can call somebody and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure that all the numbers you got in your phone book, everybody ain't saved in your phone book. You can call all those in your phone book. Well, I know you said, well, preacher, it made me feel uncomfortable to call folk. Well, let me help you here. Would it be uncomfortable for you to see them wind up in hell? Which one is more uncomfortable? Well, fine, if that don't help you, let me go on a little bit further here. You got a cell phone, and you got a whole lot of contacts in your cell phone. Every morning, I send out a text. Well, fine, you can take that text and forward it to them. You're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look, fine, let me help you a little bit further. Maybe you have not had an opportunity to participate in our Zoom fellowship. It's a time for us to encourage one another. Baby, it's time for you to log in the Zoom fellowship. I know you said, well, Pastor, I don't use technology that much. Well, neither do I, but I had to learn a little bit about how to do it. And if I can learn to do it, we can put our heads together and we can learn to do it together. Look, fine, let me help you. Greater is he that is in you. You are more than a conqueror. I can do all 
all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there is nothing that we cannot do when we put our heads together and we allow the Lord to lead us. We can do this thing together. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Well, let me get off my soapbox. Unless I worry you too long, let me try and hasten and close and get out of here. The verse goes on and says, For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And you've got to understand, you know, by the argument that Paul presented in the previous 56 verses, that what you're doing is not in vain. You know it by deep conviction that the gospel is the truth. Your labor that you have been laboring in his vineyard is not in vain. The word labor in this text means to be toiling and working to the point of exhaustion, to the point of fatigue, to the point to where you are going to go. I want you to know that when you work for the Lord, he's going to reward you for your labor. And you don't have to worry about it because I will assure you the Lord is going to reward you not just on that side, but he's going to reward you in this life. He's going to provide what you need. He's going to give you the strength that you need to get to the other side of this pandemic. I want you to know that you need to keep on serving the Lord while you're down here. And as you're serving the Lord, it's going to pay off after a while. If you keep on and uh, hold on and be faithful, he's going to reward you down here while you're on earth. And he's going to reward you when you get to the other side. You're wondering how you keep on making it from day to day. It's just the rewards of the Almighty God. You're wondering how you get up out of the bed every single morning. It's just the rewards of the Almighty God. You're wondering how you get food on your table when your money is funny and your change is strange. It's just the rewards of the Almighty God. You ought to be able to thank the Lord for making ways for you when he hadn't made ways for others. You ought to be able to thank the Lord because he kept on blessing you for 16 years, for 116 years. You've got to understand the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is an invisible church, but it's also visible. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a local church, but it's also a universal church. You all know by now the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a united church. It stands as one body with many different members. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the elect of God. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is God's own possession. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is God's own glory. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ ha, is always ha, the family of God. Ha, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ ha, is the vineyard of God. Ha, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ ha, is the flock of God. Ha, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ ha, is the temple of God. Ha, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ ha, is made of ha, a royal priesthood. Ha, well, why am I telling you this, preacher? Ha, in the midst of this pandemic, ha, We've got to continue on huh, with the vision of this church. Huh. We've got to continue on huh, to evangelize the world. Huh. We've got to continue on huh, to reach in the laws. Huh. We've got to continue on huh, to lay hands on the sick huh, and see their bodies healed. Huh. We've got to continue on huh, and making disciples. Huh. We've got to continue on huh, with having Bible study. Huh. We've got to continue on huh, with having prayer meeting. Huh. We got to continue on huh, to ministering huh, to the people in the church huh, and the people out of the church. Huh. We got to continue on huh, with having fellowship. Huh. We got to continue on huh, with worshiping God huh, from sunrise.
Jesus. The son said, we've got to continue on with having prayer meeting. You've got to understand when you have a prayer meeting, you're talking to God and God is talking to you. We've got to continue on with having a praise party. You've got to continue on with praising God for the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We've got to continue on to confessing our sin. But whether you know it or not, we sin by omission or we sin by commission. Do I have anybody who know what I'm talking about? We've got to continue on and reading the word. We've got to continue on and studying the word. We've got to continue on with preaching the gospel. We've got to continue on with celebrating the Lord's Supper. We've got to continue on and giving our offering. I want you to know the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is marching on. We're marching up to Zion. Do I have anybody that know what I'm talking about? We've got to stay on the battlefield. We've got to fight until he comes for us. It ain't over yet. This is still a fresh start for you and I. We've got to keep marching until we reach our goal. We've got to stay on our knees until we reach our goal. I don't know about you, but I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I'll serve my Lord until I die. While I have breath in my body, I'll praise his name. While I have breath in my body, I'll preach his word. While I have breath in my body, I'll glorify him. While I have breath in my body, I'll tell somebody that Jesus is the way. While I have breath in my body, I'll glorify him. While I have breath in my body, I'll love him. While I have breath in my body, I'll lift him up. While I have breath in my body, I'll shout for him. While I have breath in my body, I'll run over him. While I have breath in my body, I'll do everything that I can to give him glory, to give him praise, to magnify him, to advance his kingdom so the whole world will see and know that he is God, that he is Lord, that he is Savior, that he is a way maker, that he is a burden bearer. Do I have anybody who know what I'm talking about? I've come too far to turn around now. Do I have anybody say I'm going to run home just a little while longer? I'm going to run home and see what the end's going to be. I'm going to run home and see what the end's going to be. Do I have anybody who know what I'm talking about? It's not over. You and I, we owe it to all of those who have come before us, who have served faithfully until the Lord called them home. You and I owe it to them to continue to serve faithfully. We may not be here in this sanctuary but our service to the Lord must continue. The spread of the gospel must continue. Look, let me help you. We now have to use technology to continue to expand the kingdom of God. Whether you know it or not, when you're on your phone, you can reach the entire world. When you're on your laptop, you can reach the entire world. I want to know that for the next 12 months, that you're going to do everything you can to reach the world for Christ. We don't have a vision just for calling friends, but a vision for reaching the world. We want to reach every lost person Let me get off my soapbox. Happy anniversary.
Christian enjoys celebrating 160 years of serving the Lord. Enjoy your supper, enjoy your give, your meal. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Know that God loves you. Know that God is concerned about you. Know that God cares about you. Know that he has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. Know that he is right there with you, right where you are. Know that he loves you just the way that you are. Know that he cares for you. Know that he's given you the grace to go to the other side of this pandemic. And we're going to do it together. Know that Judas, Alan, and I, we love you. We are praying for you. And know that God is going to work this thing out. Come back. Join me on Wednesday. We'll continue to deal with worship. Let me share this with you. Like this video, share this video with others. It's an opportunity for you to continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, let's go. Let's go. We can get out of here. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee. May the Lord give thee peace. In Jesus' name.